Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows XP Build 2481 in VirtualBox. Now, this is a part of the pre-release uh, pre candidate one of the Whistler XP beta series, and it was uh, compiled or released on May 24th, 2001. Um, and really didn't bring, uh, there were some new uh, changes, features that were added. There was a, um, if you've seen in some of the previous builds, there was an animated logo at the login screen. Uh, they did remove that and it features a new boot screen here too, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, should be the Windows XP boot screen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but we'll definitely check that out here in this video. Um, and they have changed the, uh, um, They've added two new color variants to the uh, themes as well, the silver and the green uh, variants there. Um, so that is also new in this build here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it here. Um, links, of course, will be in the description for VirtualBox. Um, version 7.0.2 is the latest version at the time of this video. There will also be a link here to WinWorld's website for the download link for Whistler or SP Build 2481. Uh, the ISO here, um, and then we'll also have the mega link here for the MS-DOS 6.22 ISO that we'll need to change the bio state of this build. Um, so that's all you'll need. Those links, of course, again, are in the description if you need any of those. And then uh, once that's done, uh, we'll go ahead and just hop into VirtualBox here. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. I'm just going to call this Windows XP Build 2481, and then um, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's, uh, it is selected at Windows XP 32-bit. We actually can insert the ISO here if we want as well. So if you want to do that, um, just go to where that's located. And uh, it'll say Windows XP 32-bit detected. We're not going to do the uh, unattended installation because we do need to set the BIOS state manually. So make sure skip unattended installation is checked. We'll go ahead and hit next. Um, you can leave the RAM at 180 megs. You can actually up it if you want. I'm going to actually up it to a gig, um, but you can leave it at the default. And then when we hit next, it's going to have us create a virtual hard disk. Um, you can do a pre-allocate full size so it takes up the full 10 gigs if you want, or you can uncheck it and it'll just use it as it goes pretty much. But 10 gigs should be fine. Um, so just next, and then it'll give you a summary of the uh, machine to create and just hit finish to create that machine. And it will create your machine. You can see in the bottom. So once that's created, we'll go ahead and go into um, the settings. So uh, I actually did make a mistake. The first thing we're going to want to have in is the MS-DOS ISO. So it really doesn't matter the fact that we have that in there. Um, so just make sure instead that the MS-DOS ISO is the one we'll insert. And then we can start the machine. So it'll power the machine up. And then it should boot us into the MS-DOS 6.22 uh, ISO prompt here. And then we we'll want to change that bio state by just typing date. And then the date again is May 24th, 2001. So that's 05-24-2001. And if you hit enter, it'll change it. And you can confirm that by typing date. And it should say Thursday, May 24th, 2001. So once that's done, we can reinsert the 2481 ISO, um, maybe down in here, but you can search it if you want. Um, and once that's done, just go ahead and go up to machine and do a reset. And so now it'll come up into the uh, blue screen part of the setup for Windows XP setup it has here. Uh, they didn't change it just yet so that it just says Windows setup. It still says Windows XP setup. And then it may go blank here for a second and then it'll pop back up. So once that's come up here, just hit enter to continue. It'll have the welcome to setup, just hit enter again. And then we'll proceed to the licensing agreement. So we'll wanna go ahead and hit F8 to agree. We'll hit enter to install on the new partition there. And we're gonna for uh, format the NTFS with the NTFS file system quick. You can do the normal one if you want, you don't have to do quick. Um, it's just something there that if you want it to just have go a little quicker it really doesn't matter which one you pick but if you want it to just go a little bit quicker you can do the quick format that's going to copy over the files um, this will take just a little bit of time to complete then once that's done it will go ahead and um, we'll do a reboot of the machine so once that loads through 
on the copying files, it completes, and it's gonna prompt us to go ahead and reboot. So we're gonna hit enter to do the reboot here, and then I believe it should, yep, it'll prompt to press any key to boot from the CD. Do not do that, you'll go in a loop. Um, you can see that it's got Windows XP Professional version 2002, so you can see this is the final um, bootloader that it had um, when it made this change in this build. Um, you can see the familiar Windows XP setup on the graphic side here. So it'll base, it's basically, um, with without some final touches, Windows XP. Um, it's just like the final version. Um, so it'll proceed through installing devices, as you've seen before, on the typical Windows XP installations. And then uh, it should prompt us into our first uh, setup window here. So... Um, after that goes through, it'll have us pick our regional and language options. So make sure that's set accordingly and hit next. Then you want to type in a name um, or organization, whatever you wish. Um, so make sure at least the name is entered in there and hit next. Then it's going to have us enter in the uh, product key, which uh, will be listed here. Um, and normally these product keys, if I don't have any in the description, just an FYI, you can certainly um, locate the product keys all over the place on the internet too. Um, you know, they're not too hard to find. Um, there's a whole website that has those product keys and I mean, it really doesn't matter anyways. Once you have that in, um, go ahead and, uh, you can name the computer, whatever you wish. I'm just going to call it XP 2481. Don't need an administrator password. You can enter one if you wish, but you don't need it. And then you can change your time zone if you'd like. Um, Setting that accordingly, not what I'm looking for there. There we go. And then if you hit next, it'll do installing network. It'll come up with the networking settings. So just make sure that's set at typical, hit next. Have this at no work group, just leave it the same, hit next. And it'll go through the process of installing uh, or copying the files and installing here. So we'll have copying files, then completing installation. Um, then it'll proceed to the next part of installing start menu items, those sorts of things. So. Uh, should be a relatively quick process. As you can see, it's loading through very smoothly and very quickly. Um, and then we're on to registering components. You can see that time is going down very, very quickly um, as well. Already down under 15 minutes. Um, and now at 10 minutes, you can see it's going insanely quick. Now, it may differ if you have a little bit slower hardware or different hardware than I do. Um, and it may go slower. So... Um, then once it completes through all these and it'll go ahead and have us do a reboot and then we'll get into the next part of the setup um, that we'll see. So I'm just letting this run through here and then we'll get to that restart point. So should be coming up. If you do get this uh, error, you can view the log file if you want. It'll just say that one of the files um, can't be verified, which is fine. As long as no other errors come up like a BIOS data or anything else comes up, that's all we're looking for. So it'll reboot, do not press any key to boot from the CD, and then it's gonna boot up into the operating system here. You'll see the, the bootloader here. And then you can see on the bottom, it says Windows XP Professional Build 2481. And you'll see the display settings. It's gonna make a quick adjustment when you click OK to adjust the screen resolution. If you hit OK, it'll prompt us into the next part of the setup. And I think we'll see it plays the music. I think it does after we click next. Um, so we're on the welcome screen and hit next. There we go. So it does play it after hit next versus on the final version where it started playing. Um, so when it does the check, just hit, uh, make sure it's on yes, or you can skip it if you want actually. Do no uh, for the activate windows, just hit no and hit next. Then you wanna create your user account, hit next. It's gonna say thank you, and then we'll finish, and it should play the uh, startup sound. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first builds that includes the Windows XP sounds from the final release. Um, I know it was about this time where they switched them up from the Windows Whistler slash 2000 slash ME um, builds of this. Now, um, we do have it fully installed here. Um, you can look through all the uh, settings if you wish. And now you can see too, if we do 
logging off here. This used to be animated in previous builds and it is no longer animated. And also you can see here too, that's a kind of a noticeable uh, thing in the beta versus the uh, RTM release or the final release. It actually displays your the name of your computer instead of saying turn off computer too. So that's a change that was made later on. It just said turn off computer. Um, but there it is, uh, the operating system is fully installed here. And um, as for guest editions, if we try to insert the guest editions uh, image, um, we'll see if it recognizes it here. It looks like it does. And if we hit next and go through to install, you can see it's going through on attempting to try and do the installs and it looks like it does work. So um, if you go ahead and hit finish, it'll restart and it'll shut it down. And if it gets stuck here, I'm not sure if it will, but sometimes if it gets stuck, you can just go up and do a machine reset. Not what I meant to do, do the reset. Hopefully it didn't crash it here. Sometimes it happens with guest editions. So it looks like it's trying to reboot and I don't think it's doing so. Uh, let's do a full shutdown. And power up. Okay, so it looks like guest editions, um, if you install it, does actually crash that. So that's at least something to be aware of on the um, tutorial side of things. Do not install guest editions or it will crash the machine. Um, so just be aware of that when you're going through the install. Um, that is why I do test that out here. So um, do not install guest editions uh, if you end up trying to do so or you will just proceed with that screen. But otherwise, um, that is the tutorial there on how to install Windows XP Build 2481 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, uh, you can leave a like down below or if you did uh, find it helpful at all. Uh, if you have any ideas for any future videos, you can leave a comment down below as well. Um, and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you can hit the subscribe button down below um, and hit the post notification bell there to be up to date on my content and to get notified whenever I upload a video. Um, once again, this is the video tutorial on how to install Windows XP Build 2481 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.